Great. You Thank you. Yeah, go on, Gabs. Hi, this is everybody. Gabby, and we finally caught up. Um, we're going to hold our hands up, everyone, and say our fault. We've been crap. And Gabby's been amazing. Thanks, Gabs. <laughs> Thanks for the patience. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we could all be crap. But no, Gabs, thanks for your patience. And the reason why we were doing this call is because um, Gabby didn't get to finish a story that we think is a really frigging beautiful story. And we've heard you tell it before, and we think it's a really powerful one. I feel like it, it kind of, it cuts to the essence. It cuts yeah. to the essence. And I feel like this short story kind of summarizes life. So do you want to say anything quick? Yeah, no, just thank you so much. Yeah. And I hope everyone enjoys it as much as we do. Yes. Well, I'm thrilled to be here. And, uh, you know, for me too, this is a story, I think, of the essence and of hope and sur being surprised. And uh, this was just so, this happened a long time ago. My gosh, it's ha it probably happened like, I don't know, maybe 20 years ago, maybe something like that. And yet it's so alive in my mind and so this is a story of a young lady that we're going to call Mary today um and so Mary I met Mary when she was incarcerated in uh, a place that's called Juvenile Hall in San Jose California she was part of my classes and um I knew that she had done something intense because um she was there for the long for the long haul anyway um mary and i started spending time together and then after class we would just talk and you know hang out like girls uh although <laughs> she pointed out i was older than her mom so i could have beat her mom but i was just hanging out with her um and it came the time when she was going to turn 18 and when you turn 18 in the judicial system, you pass from being uh, housed in juvenile hall to adult jail. And so she told me, you know, I'm going to be, they're going to be transferring me to the, the county jail. And uh, her birthday is one day before mine. So before she was transferred, I decided that I wanted to, to celebrate her, you know, to celebrate her 18th birthday. So I asked permission and I brought some food and then uh, I brought flowers. And I remember being at the supermarket and just almost like at a the last minute thought, just grabbing some roses, there were red roses. And uh, we got there and I gave it to her and we had that little party. And then she looked at the name of the roses and the name of the roses were Freedom. And she asked me point blank, do you think they're gonna let me go? And it's one of the moments that I remember in my life of being completely um, ill prepared for, shocked, not knowing. Um, and I remember uh, kind of looking sort of for an answer that would comfort her uh, in my knowledge, in my pool of knowledge, and there was not. So a moment must have passed by and what, what I said was, you know, I don't know if they're gonna let you out, but I do know that whatever happens, you will be okay. It doesn't matter where you are, because the blocks and the bricks of the building that you will be in cannot take your well-being away. Right. You know, she left, time passed. And one of the rules of juvenile hall is um, not to contact kids after um, they leave your class, so you cannot contact them. And you know, it's just, it's just part of the rules. And so I had never felt the the desire or the, the impulse to contact any other kid, but I just felt so connected with this kid. So anyway, I started talking to my supervisor and I 
talk to Jamil Hall and then I talked to the people at the jail and I said, you know, I really would love to visit her and uh, continue my work and just check on her, see how she's doing. So they allowed that, which was great. Um, but they did tell me, you know, you're going to have to wait a while because I don't know why. When they get transferred from juvenile hall to the adult jail, there is a month of solitary. And so solitary in this case means that uh, people are in their cells for a month and they get out of their cells to bathe every other day. So they have a 45 minute period where they're out of their cells every other day. So I had to wait for that. So I waited a month and then I went back and they said, you know, the, the, um, the solitary has been extended another month. And when I heard this, I remember feeling a heavy, a heavy heart because I thought, God, you know, it's a long time for a person to be in solitary. And all kinds of ideas started coming to my mind, like ideas like um, something happens to people in jail because of the lack of sun and the, the food. And I was really worried. I was really, really worried about her well-being, about her physical well-being as well. Anyway, you know, it just felt like ever. It just felt, I don't know if it was two months, to be honest. It just felt like longer than that. Eventually, they said, okay, you can go visit her. So um, I had not visited did anybody in jail like that before? I have been in jail teaching, but I had never visited people in jail. Um, and the the rooms, the visiting rooms are little and they're dark and they're gray and they're cold and they don't look very clean. Uh, and I like clean things, so I'm like, oh geez, you know? So that, and also in my mind, I could almost see this, this person that was going to show up to the visit, and I imagined that she was going to be, you know, in not a good shape physically and also just psychologically and spiritually. So, you know, there I'm waiting, and I just knew that I was going to see her and she was not going to be well. I just knew, I just knew it in my heart, and also because I had been teaching in jails for so long that I had seen what happens, you know, physically to people. So there I am waiting and then uh, the staff member comes and says, you know, she's gonna be here in a second. And then I hear the, she was double shocked to her ankles and, and her wrists. So I hear the ching, ching, you know, of her walking and getting closer to the room. And then, uh, I don't know why, but I, I chose the chair that was facing the wall, not facing the door. I don't know if I was instructed to do that or not. And then the door opens and I turn around and there is a picture of health. And there is a picture, she, she looked radiant and she looked beautiful and she looked shiny. And my mind was like, how is this even possible? How is this possible under the circumstances? And you know, it's funny because by then I must have been learning about the principles probably for maybe seven, eight years. I had seen a lot of things. I personally knew to be true this idea of we have a place in us that's untouchable. I knew that in my heart. And yet I doubted it in this particular case, because the circumstances were intense, you know, they were compelling. So I look at her and you know, her hair is done, she has makeup, I don't know where she got makeup from, but she looks just brilliant and, and healthy and her, you know, her, her, her cheeks are shiny and pink and she sits down and I'm still sort of in shock and she's so happy to see me and I'm so happy to see her, but in shock still. And so we have this first um, conversation and my mind's still trying to catch up to what I'm seeing, right? Like, wait, what happened here? Uh, and then at one point I asked her, I asked her, what happened? Why are you doing so well? 
And she turned around and she goes, well, you told me that I'd be okay no matter what, and that's true. So I just got here and I started, you know, exercising because remember that I wanted to have a flatter stomach and all this stuff. So she started doing sit-ups and push-ups and whatever else. And, and she had talked to people about getting her high, school, her high school diploma and she was really doing well. And you know, as I'm telling you the story right now, what I realized is how matter of fact this was for her. Like, well, you told me, and this is true. And so that's it. There was like, no, you know, no consideration, not studying, not like, nothing like that. It was just, yeah, that's true. And then all of a sudden, she's able to experience two months of solitary confinement in a way that I just never imagined that it would be possible. Even with my understanding, you know, because I suppose that I, I don't know, I got entangled or forgot that well-being truly, 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 truly has nothing to do with your circumstances. Truly, truly. So anyway, uh, I asked permission to go back. And so we had a second uh, visit and um, she asked me about the books, some books that I had given her in Juvenile Hall. And then she asked me if I could make copies because she was giving it to some of the girls. And, and you know, people are very creative because they're not supposed to be passing anything. But apparently, you can pass sheets, I don't know how, from one cell to another under the under the floor, like on, under the door and by the floor, I don't know exactly how. And so she started talking to other girls about what she had learned. And then at one point, I, mean, I just remember I've become her secretary, you know, it's like, okay, I need so many copies of this and I need, you know, this and that. I'm like, okay, you know, I'll do this for you. And so what, what I realized at one point is the student had become the teacher, right? There was this one young person that had seen something so matter of fact, it was like matter of fact. And so deeply, in a way, really, that when I told her, I don't know that I understood the depth of, of that statement. And um, we continued, we continued with some visits until I was not allowed to visit anymore. You know, there's a certain number of visits that I was allowed. And so this story, and it happened a long time ago. And yet, for me, it was a moment that I will never forget, personally and professionally. So there's that story. And then just recently, just last week, this is a new story, fresh off the press. I'm working with an, another person that was incarcerated because he has been diagnosed with mental illness and he forgot to take his medication or he did, he did not want to take the medication because it really uh, affected his, um, his physical energy and he works in construction. So he started to hallucinate and um, he ended up running into, he got into a car and ended up running into another car. So the police officers came you know, uh, and they asked him, did you do this on purpose? And under the influence of psychosis, he said, yes. So that means attempted murder, right? So then he gets incarcerated. Somehow his wife hears about me and we start seeing him. And he doesn't have a lot of language. You know, he doesn't have a lot of education. And yet we've had the most really amazing conversations. And one of the things that he told me was this, and this is prior to us working together. He said that he was in jail and he was really worried because he does, you know, he doesn't speak English really well. He speaks mostly Spanish. He didn't understand what was going on. He had never been in jail. So he was really worried. But he said, you know, there came a point where I just felt a deep peace of mind. I just was at peace. And I was in jail, but I was at peace. Anyway, 
So they get them out and then we start working together and we start talking about the principles and we start talking about this place that is untouchable and we start talking about the role of thought in our lives. And just yesterday, no, no, not yesterday, it was just the, the week before, on Friday, she said, you know, I know that I can be sent back to jail. I know that I can be deported and be separated from my family. And yet, I have the greatest peace that I've had in my life. He said, when I am by myself, he goes, you know, I have this peace all the time, but when I'm by myself, I almost feel like I can fly. I cannot express the, the sense of peace and tranquility and serenity that I feel. You know, and I was listening to him and I could tell that he was sharing something with me that was real and that was honest. And again, I think this is another case where the student has become the teacher. You know, I was really just sort of like listening to him with a sense of this man knows something at a depth that I don't in this moment. So um, I love when these things uh, happen close to me, when I can observe mm -hmm. them. Um, I don't know what happened to Maria, to our girl that we're calling Maria. I don't know what happened with her. Um, I don't know what's going to happen with this new client that I have. I don't know if he's going to get deported. But I am just so pleased, honored, happy that people can be in these very complex circumstances with serious impact for them and for their families, and yet they can experience, I think, what most of us want, right? Or all of us want around the world, which is uh, peace of mind. So it's remarkable. It's just remarkable. And I just feel so pleased and wonderful and honored that I've been able to be around these two particular people. Beautiful, Gabby. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. I was thinking it's probably 10 years ago I heard, no, I think 2010 when we interviewed you, I heard that story. Um, but yeah, the impact of it's still there. Yeah. Mm. You, because I, I've been to jail myself when I was younger for violence and I have since been in working in, in jails as well myself, done bits and pieces. And what I notice about jail is it's full of terrified people, mm. especially the especially the men's. I've never been in a women's, so, but I'm guessing it's similar. You stick a load of scared men in a in a in a confined room that they cannot escape from. You're going to end up with an awful lot of problems. Mm -hmm. And anybody, <clears throat> if if somebody can find peace in those kind of situations, then <laughs> just trust me, if you can find peace in that place, you can find peace anywhere. Mm -hmm. You can. It's one of the most terrifying places I've ever been in my life. Mm -hmm. But if somebody can find peace in that place, then they can find peace. And we can all find peace anywhere. I love that, Gab. Yeah, you know, with so many uncertain, I mean, this client, this last client that I'm talking to you about, there are, it's a serious case. It's a serious case with complex circumstances. Yeah. I just love that he is enjoying a serenity, a peace of mind. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, it's like you said, these are examples of how really the circumstances are not the source of our peace or our trouble mind. Mm. 
And so I just feel really, I, I don't know, it's just excited. Happening. Like, oh my God, this yeah. is fantastic. You know, this is wonderful that, that this can exist. I think it really gives me hope. As a practitioner, it just kind of grounds me in a, in a really powerful way. And as a human being, it just opens possibilities, you know? Doesn't it just? Yeah. So that's it. These are the stories. Um, I hope they can bring you inspiration. Uh, like, even if it's at the end of the tunnel, like a little twinkling star, you know? Um, they certainly have done that for me. Thing is about twinkling stars, the closer you get to them, the bigger they get, don't they? <laughs> and the brighter they get. Well, thank you, Gabby, love. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. It's been worth waiting for. Certainly. That's why I think it was, was it November? November? <laughs> yeah, I know, I'll tell you what, November, is it eight? No. Was it your first day of your holiday? Yeah, yeah. So it was, and you know, I am so sorry too, because there was this like, you know what was interesting? What I discovered with that, when you first asked me, and I looked at my calendar, I had a sense that this is not going to work. It's going to be terrible because of the signal there, right? And yet I wanted to do it so much. And I was like, well, let me call the hotel. The hotel assured me this would not be a problem, right? <laughs> and, we, and then I bought like a card. I was like, well, okay, this is a problem. Because as soon as I got there, I checked the, the signal and I was like, no, this is a problem. So. It was interesting to me how my desire to be with you guys sort of like blind me of this. I'm happy that I did it, but it was like, you know, it was, it was just really <laughs> terrible for me because I just felt like, oh my God, here we go again, you know, here we go again. So perfect because this is brilliant. All righty. Well, I'll let you guys go. Thank you so much for taking the time to read. Send, send pictures of the baby. I will. We will. I can't Thank believe you. you stayed asleep for the whole time. God bless, love. Okay. Love, love. Bye. Bye.